Um, this is um, my amendment to add a vote to the ballot in October, asking the electorate if, uh, as you can see under D, yes, I support the Vancouver, the city of Vancouver participation. No, I oppose the city of Vancouver participation. This is exactly the same question uh, that was uh, given in the 2003 plebiscite in the lead up to the 2010 Olympics. We have the advantage now that we can get this on the ballot uh, for October 15th. When I did put this in for staff comments, the comments that I received back were things like the size of the font. Um, and I just wanted to touch on, on the fact uh, that this does not um, in, in any way uh, uh, in, violate the, the MOU. And I, I just wanna be really clear about that uh, because it has come up and in questions earlier. Reconciliation, uh, we are a city of reconciliation and we embrace that, but that doesn't preclude our, our responsibility to our electorate. And um, as you'll recall in 2010, there was, or the 2003 one rather, leading to 2010, there was 65% support. And that gave the kind of uh, demonstrated public community support that tipped Tip, tip the needle, move the needle in terms of the city's ability to get the games. So I don't know why we would be, um, what we have to be afraid of consulting the public about this. I overwhelmingly heard uh, from the public that they want to have a voice in this. And this is something that we can do. And again, um, I'm not exactly sure how uh, our responsibility to our electorate got confused with being a city of reconciliation. That was never my intention. And I just wanted to go on the record as saying that. But I do believe that it's important. Something like this is not the Invictus Games. This is not the FIFA World Cup. This is the Olympics. This is a $4 billion price tag and a lot of risk attached to it. And I think the responsible thing for us to do is to give the the uh, Vancouver electors a chance to have their say. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor Hardwick. To the amendment, Councillor Fry. Yeah, well, I certainly appreciate the intent of allowing uh, the public to have their say, but we heard pretty clear and overwhelmingly from Chief Sparrow and from the COC representative, Tricia, that this would, would kill the bid. Um, so I, 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 I think in the spirit of the amendment and the amendment to the amendment that we just passed and that really actually I think wisely highlights that these are indigenous this is an indigenous led bid and then we're in the canoe and we're paddling alongside uh it seems um completely counter to what we just committed to to then go and kill this bid before it actually um uh, even has a, a chance for our staff to engage in the work so I won't be supporting this thank you Councillor Fry. Mayor Stewart, to the amendment. Thanks, Chair. I have a uh, point of information to the mover of the... Go ahead. Thanks very much. Um, uh, Councillor Hardwick, I, I presume that you would be ticking the no box if this goes ahead? Um, I'm waiting. What I'd really like to have actually is the books from the 2010 Olympics with, that are embargoed at the archives until 2025 is making decisions without having that kind of underlying um, understanding and in such a big decision runs counter to uh, my decision-making uh, experience. But I'm not willing to say one way or the other, and that's not the point. Just as uh, it was uh, stated by Councillor DiGenova when she made her amendment, it was not whether we're for or against, it's about doing the right thing. It, uh, I'll be uh, voting against this, <clears throat> Chair. Um... Although this may not formally violate the MOU that we signed, in my opinion, it certainly violates the spirit of the MOU. It violates and undermines all the efforts we put in toward reconciliation on this project, the good faith agreements that we've had. Uh, and in this stage of the process, we're still, uh, I would say, you know, as we build this canoe, as we all get in it and paddle, um, this puts a hole right in the middle of it. So uh, I'll be voting no because, in my opinion, it violates the spirit of uh, us being a, a true city of reconciliation. Thank you. Thanks, Mayor Stewart. Councillor DiGenova, to the moment. Thanks, Chair. I'm wondering if I can ask a point of information to the mover. Go ahead. 
Thank you. Councillor Hardwick, in our recommendations under subsection I, it says once the host nation's exploratory assembly for 2030 Olympic and Paralympic Winter um, Games bid consideration has publicly announced whether or not they recommend advancing the BC bid. So I'm just wondering if you could share with me why you think we should ask the public for input on something that we haven't even heard might go forward. We may hear because it says, and it's very clear in the staff recommendations, whether or not. So they may come back to us, and I never heard today from the uh, assembly that, that they, they were in this one way or the other, that they're moving towards this. They'd like us to paddle with them in the canoe, but they haven't made a decision yet, and that's very clear here to me. So do you think we're jumping the gun here, Councillor Hardwick? No, I think we're uh, taking advantage of an election that's coming up on October 15th. And the simple act of adding this to the ballot that's going out anyway would save us doing this downstream. And uh, it, I, I have con uh, concerns about violating um, our trust with the electorate. It seems to me, again, there is a well-established precedent, um, and that's why we've used the identical question here. It would have strengthened the argument. I'm not persuaded um, by the, the, the commentary of, about reconciliation. Why would reconciliation suggest that we not have a democratic process? I don't think the two are mutually exclusive. Okay, and then just another point of information, if I may chair. Yes, absolutely. Thank you. Um, I, I understand that what the, the assembly is doing right now is, uh, is looking at the feasibility of doing this, and, and I know that you support uh, data-driven research. So considering we don't have that data-driven research yet, I mean, would you be supportive instead of, of having, just as we've had plebiscites before on transit, that, you know, maybe, maybe this could be something that was brought forward at a later time? It didn't have to, we don't have to take advantage of something like a ballot here that we could, in fact, uh, have a campaign afterwards, after after uh, the assembly comes back and gives us, uh, you know, their input. I'm just saying, do, do you see this as the okay, only, Councilor, I'm asking, do you see this as okay, the only possibility? The is this the okay. only possibility? Okay, Councillor DiGenova. Um, this, I don't see the sequencing as an issue, as you've stated, for starters. Um, but by putting it on the ballot, we save a couple of million dollars at least that it would cost to hold a standalone plebiscite. So again, in, in I, I don't think sequencing is an issue and it would be um, a savings for us to do it now. And again, I think uh, from the research that I've done um, that it would strengthen the bid, um, presuming of course that it's a, a positive outcome. And I would think that we would uh, expect a positive outcome to push forward with this project. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Councillor Hardwick. I'm just going to speak. That's your time? No. Oh sorry. oh, sorry. We are not in question period. I just... Thank you. I, it was a point of information. I could see why you think that, Chair. Um, I'm, I'm going to say that uh, I, I really, and I understand, Councillor Hardwick, that, that you, in trying to explain this to me, um, you shared that this was about taking advantage of the opportunity with the, with the upcoming election. Um, I don't see it that way. I, uh, you know, you're you're entitled to your opinion, but I see it as taking advantage of the assembly that has done a lot of work and has told us that this would hurt the work that they're doing moving forward. I also think that it's not worth a couple of million dollars to ruin the relationships that we're trying to continue to build as a city of reconciliation. So at this point, I will not be supporting this. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor DiGenova. Uh, to the amendment, Councillor Kirby Young. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I have one really quick point of information, if I might, through you to okay. staff, and I think it can be addressed to Karen at this point. And if there were a bid hypothetical submission January timeframe, can you refresh what timeline a decision might be made on a host, the host destinations? Just to clarify, a decision by City Council about Vancouver's... No, if a bid was advanced collectively, if we're at that stage and submitted to the IOC what, what the timeline was potentially for the IOC making that determination. 
for the host destination. Our understanding, um, uh, Trisha can correct me if I'm wrong, but our understanding is that the IOC has claimed definitively that they're making a decision, I believe it's in May 2023. And I understand okay. that timeline is not movable. Okay, thanks. Um, so speaking to this, I can offer a bit of perspective. This feels a bit like um, deja vu, uh, kind of alumni time to me, because again, going back to my time at Destination Vancouver, formerly Tourism Vancouver as the Director of Marketing and Partnership at the time, um, I remember when the mayor of the day and council um, put forth um, and wanted to have a plebiscite move forward uh, yes, for the 2010 games. It was really late in that particular process. It was quite close to the games. Um, and it is a tremendous amount of work because it's not just posing the question, but there's also a need for education to the public around the parameters of what a bid would involve. And, and I can tell you about the flurry of activity that went on. And at that time, um, Tours Vancouver sort of volunteered to take a very supportive role um, in order to leave the then bid society free to pursue the bid and not be distracted from that work. Um, and it was tremendous amount of engagement that was required to happen. I remember producing buttons in 30 different languages, for example, and collateral and all sorts of things. And it was, yes, 2010, if anybody remembers those buttons and stickers were everywhere. Um, I remember spending my Christmas Eve writing a brief um, for the market research company to go out and see how, do some focus group testing and see how people felt about it. Because really, it was a scramble to kind of get to that level. Um, so it's, I just want to say it's not something that should be taken lightly in terms of the amount of effort that it takes. But where I think... Um, we are here, and I don't think it's been maybe expressed quite this way, is the role of the elected officials at this point in time in determining the viability and risk of a bid, which is what our entire conversation has focused around today, right? Is that we don't know enough yet. We want to keep moving forward. That seems to be the will of council based on this conversation. We want to honor in good faith. We want to keep that exploration going with in our partnership and our commitment to First Nations. But part of that moving forward is around assessing viability and risk and the opportunity to bring the other needed partners on board. Um, and so it is, there is, I think, it is incumbent upon us, it's our responsibility, and I think the expectation of the general public who elected us to get to a point that we can make a recommendation that they could comment on. Because at this point, they can't. And so I think that they would be responding to a different question because they'll see a $4 billion price tag, but with a lot of questions swirling around it and not unification around the bid and what that actually looks like. And that is going to have a very different public sentiment indicator um, based relative to getting to a different point. So it doesn't mean, for example, and that is a tight timeline, that in early 2023 you couldn't expedite some form of public engagement. And perhaps it's not a plebiscite. Perhaps it's um, well-invested third-party quantified market research that can come in and support the bid, because I can say confidently that while the ISC has changed its bidding process, if memory serves, they do seriously take the level of public support and host destinations uh, to heart as part of their assessment for the bid. They have their different criteria. They have the logistics around how venue ready are you, uh, what's your geopolitical assessment, is your community behind you, and there's a rating scales, and they apply to all of those pieces. Um, and so you ideally, if you get to a point where a bid is viable, because it's going to have more benefits, less risk, and the outcome's going to be better, you want an informed decision, and you also want to go for a good outcome. So if you have a solid bid, you're not actually going to kibosh it um, because you're not setting people up to make an informed choice there or sending a signal to the IOC um, that there's factions there. And I'm not going to impugn motives on this. I'm going to say that I think in terms of sometimes why plebiscites come forward, although I will make the statement that I think last time was entirely political, because it was an effort to derail 2010, in my opinion. I'll, clear, I'll qualify that. I think this council has the opportunity to not make it political and to make it be a thoughtful part of how public engagement could and should happen to support a bit. So I know that was a bit long-winded, but I wanted to share that. Thanks. Only five seconds over. <laughs> Thank you. Councillor Weeb, oh, I'm sorry, that was Councillor Weeb. Um, yeah, I'll sorry. speak to it. Um, just one I think second, Councillor Weeb, we've, we've just lost the list. Um, just one second. Go ahead. And I'm sorry, councillors, unless staff picked up the list, um, I'm not sure who else was on I that list because it's disappeared. I 
If you if you haven't spoken yet and want to just get back on the list, please. Go ahead, Councillor Weeb. Yeah, um, I'll just quickly speak to this. I think that it is important that we do get um, the public's feedback on such a thing, and I think it was reported in the report that that happened. Um, however, I do think that to make good informed decisions, we need to have the information before doing um, that type of public consultation. And I think we've seen today that by our timelines, by November, we're not going to have the right information. So for my um, understanding of where we're at in this process, I don't think it's appropriate to bring this forward at this time, recognizing there's a lot of hard work to do together before we get there. And I'm supportive of um, not having a website at this time until we have all the proper information and do consultation um, in an Indigenous-led way. Thanks, Councillor Weeb. Councillor Hardwick. Go ahead. Thanks. I just wanted to respond to a couple of uh, things that uh, were slightly revisionist. Um, the plebiscite was held in 2003 um, with, uh, it, it, with great support not to derail the, the Olympics, but rather to amplify them. And uh, it was six years later that the Olympics were held. So it was a considerable time in between. Um, we should also point out that there's a difference between having a, a ballot vote during a, a, a general election, such as we're having on October 15th, and having a standalone plebiscite. Um, we know that we're hard pressed to get 40% of the electorate to turn out in civic elections. Um, we would expect substantially less turnout in uh, a standalone plebiscite. I think it was about 115,000 that turned out in 2003. So um, we have to ask ourselves, um, a, if this is really starting to represent a democratic deficit, I guess what we're saying is that uh, the elections every four years are the only things that that matter in our decision decision making for the electorate. So um, again, I just had to correct some of the misinformation that that was stated there very specifically, and to encourage council to think about the the impact of of this. We have a chance to get this um, out in front of the greatest number of Vancouver voters on October 15th. And um, you know, what I've heard from the research that I've done, I'm, I'm actually surprised that, that uh, First Nations and the COC would think that this would not help their bid. The only way it wouldn't help their bid, I guess, is if, uh, if it was um, unsuccessful and, and people opposed it. But that was not the approach that I was taking going into this. I was seeing this as something um, that Vancouverites would embrace. And again, going back to the, the one of the slides that the deputy city manager put out, it was really trying to gauge the level of public support. And you're not going to get that in, in uh, you know, some audience testing. Anyhow, um, I'll leave it there. I think it's a missed opportunity, but uh, I hear the voice of council. Hopefully the electorate will too. Thank you, Councillor Hardwick. Councillor Kirby Young? Yeah, I just feel compelled to provide a quick reply. And, and that wasn't misinformation at all. And it was seven years because it was a different timeline because that was the bidding window back in the day. And that was um, aligning with when the bid decision was being made. But it was well into the final bid, I think, when the teams were almost on their way in the final month or two to Europe for bidding. And we're in an entirely different process now where it's a rolling intake for the IOC. And we're talking now we're sort of eight years out. So they're not... It's really not analogous. Um, I think that you can't compare the previous traditional or historic, perhaps better way of putting it, IOC bidding process with what we have today with sort of a rolling intake. Um, and it wasn't about showing garnered full public support. It, 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 there was a, a real movement, and I, I stand by this, um, for and out to not hold that games. Thanks. Thanks, Councillor Kirby Young. And I believe that that is the end of the speakers to this um, amendment. So, Clerk, if you could take us to a vote on the actual uh, amendment tabled by um, Councillor Hardwick. Councillor Kirby Young, you haven't voted? Okay, that, um, that amendment fails with myself, Mayor Stewart, Councillors DeGenova, Fry, Swanson, Weeb, Boyle, Dominado, Bly, and Kirby Young in opposition. Thank you. Okay, um, we are back to the main queue. Councillor Hardwick, do you have anything else to add on the main queue? No, thank you. 